Now, Friday Night Football, presented by Monteith's Best One Tire and Auto Care. Welcome into another edition of Friday Night Football. I'm Alex Wilcox. Final week of the regular season here in Indiana, and it was a wild one. We had conference championships, heated rivalries, and overtime, and that's just in one game. Oh, it was a good one. It's the backyard brawl. 7-1 and one Mishawaka, 7-1 and one Penn. Winner claims the NIC North Championship. The Cavemen led 28-14 at the half, but the Kingsmen kept fighting back. On the goal line, Ron Paulus pushes his way in for the Penn touchdown, and it's a seven-point game in the third. Mishawaka fumbles the ensuing kickoff, and the K Kingsmen recover deep in Cavemen territory. They once again drove down to the one, and on fourth and goal, Paulus stretches the ball across the line for another score, and we've got a tie game with two minutes left in the third. But now it's Mishawaka's turn. Their very next offensive play, Chris Harness, right up the gut. He takes it 80 yards to the house, and Mishawaka is back on top, 35 to 28. What a way to answer for the cavemen. And then just seconds into the fourth quarter, Harness again runs straight through the heart of the Penn defense. This time it's a 40-yard scoring scamper, and the cavemen are back up 14. But Penn once again comes back and ties the game at 42. This one went to overtime where Mishawaka holds on to knock off Penn 49 to 42. What a game. With the win, Mishawaka claims the NIC North Championship. The Cavemen finished the regular season 8-1 and, and a perfect 5-0 and in conference play in Keith Kinder's first year at the helm as head coach. Huge win, and the win is Mishawaka's first in the backyard brawl in seven years. The Cavemen also snapped Penn's 47-game conference winning streak. Now, we had another game, the conference championship game to take you to. Uh, Plymouth hosting the Rockies of Northwood for the NLC title. Let's jump right into the four, first quarter. Northwood starts with the ball, hoping to get out to an early lead. And who else but Bronson Yoder? He keeps the snap and takes this one to the house. They missed the extra point, but 6-0 Panther lead. Later in the first, rain coming down harder now, and it's Yoder again. He just does it all. Yoder throwing up his own blocks. He breezes into the end zone to put the Panthers up 12 to nothing. And the rock pile didn't stop the Panthers. Northwood takes this one 56 to eight. They finished the regular season undefeated and outright NLC champs. All right, on to our spotlight game of the week. Warsaw hosts the Concord Minutemen. First drive of the game for Warsaw. The Tigers decide to go for it on fourth down and the ball comes loose. The Minutemen hop on it and are in Warsaw territory. That sets up an Ariel De La Paz field goal that gets just over the crossbar. Concord takes the 3-0 lead, but the Tigers come out swinging on their next drive. Wyatt a miss, breaks free up the middle. A Concord safety closes in, but get off me. Check out the stiff arm. 59-yard touchdown run for a miss gives Warsaw the 7-3 lead. On the Tigers' next drive, check out this run by Bryce Garner. Rain coming down, but he keeps going. This sets the Tigers up just outside the 10. The Tigers would settle for a Harrison Mevis field goal to make it 10-3. Warsaw goes on a 45-0 run as they win this one 45-3. Bremen visiting Culver Academy in the rain, picking things up in the second quarter. Bremen punting away the ball here. And wait, why are you showing you a punt? Oh, that's why Culver's Thai English initially fumbles the punt, but quickly recovers it. And he gets to the outside and with some help of some blockers, English is into the red zone. The Eagles are flying tonight. That's going to set up Max Miller. He keeps it himself. Sweeping up the right side and barrels through four. Yes, four defenders to make it 14-0 Eagles, giving their fans plenty to cheer about. Culver Academy Eagles soar over Bremen 17 to nothing. So after starting the season undefeated, Bremen ends it by dropping their last two as they head into sectional play. Other scores in the NIC. Elkhart Memorial knocks out Northridge 34 to nothing and Wawa C wins over Goshen 13 to 10. So with the Bremen loss last week, Marion could clinch a share of the NIC South title with a win over Washington tonight. Senior day for the Panthers over at School Field. We're scoreless in the first, Marion in the red zone, but Mitchell Nagy gets swallowed up by the Washington defense. Mario Garcia and Daniel Thompson in on the sack, making it third and long. Just two plays later, it's fourth and one now, and Nagy shoves ahead on the QB sneak for the first down inside the two-yard line. 
And then on the very next play, Nagy tries it again, but the ball pops out in the end zone. Luckily for the Knights, Paul Klein, an offensive lineman, falls on it. The refs had to deliberate for a little bit, but eventually they signal for the touchdown. As Marion takes the 7-0 lead, the Knights dominate Washington 41 to nothing. So with the win, Marion clinches a share of the NIC South title. Bremen, of course, is the other co-champion. The Knights also snapped their three-game winning streak. Now up next, more football. St. Joe looking to end the regular season on a high note. And Berrien Springs is going for their seventh straight win up in Michigan when we return. Now, back to Friday Night Football. Welcome back into New Center 16's Friday Night Football. You better bundle up because we're just halfway through the action with five games left to show you. So let's get back to the action. New Prairie played host to Elkhart Central and was ready to put on quite a show. Chase Ketterer finds Cade Boniface in the end zone on the 10-yard snag. First points of the game and the Blue Blazers look to respond, but they're picked off two plays later with an impressive interception by Ian Scornog. That sets up this Cougars running back Connor Serber per pushes through the line to add six points to the scoreboard. New Prairie wins big over Elkhart Central 49 to nothing. St. Joe hoping to snap their three game losing skid in their regular season finale hosting Adams at Father Bly Field. Eagles down nine nothing. Ira Armstead showing why he's so dangerous breaking tackles and then bursting free into the end zone for the Adams touchdown to cut the deficit to three. That made it nine to six. St. Joe still with the lead. Then on the next drive, John Driscoll back from an injury, takes it outside, it turns the corner, and he's into Eagles territory with the St. Joe first down. After that, it was Ashton Ruskowski's turn. The quarterback calls his own number. He takes it up the middle through the Adams defense for another first down. St. Joe wins 36 to six over Adams. To the Hoosier North Triton hosting Winnemac. The Trojans up 26 nothing after a long touchdown run late in the first half. And they go for two with a handoff to the big fella. <laughs> William Smith rumbles his way into the end zone for two. Love it. That's the first point Smith has ever scored. I bet Uncle Phil liked that one. <laughs> but Smith wasn't done making noise. How about on the defensive side of the ball? Winnemac throws the short pass and Smith Plays the hit stick on Tyson Johnson. Have a day, William Smith. Triton kept it going in the second half. James Snyder hits Tyler Orson over the middle, who makes the nice diving snag. The Trojans roll on the victory in this one, 36 to 20. Back to the NIC. Riley wins 40 to 6 over Glenn. And the Jimtown Jimmy shutout Clay, 41 zip. To Michigan we go after dropping their first game of the season. Berrien Springs has won six straight, hoping to make that seven in their home finale against Olivet. We pick up the action in the second quarter after a touchdown. The Shamrocks go for two. Chris Patone hits the gap and waltzes into the end zone. 28-14 Berrien Springs. Now Olivet had a hard time with the weather and the slippery conditions. They dropped the ball not once, not twice, but three times in a row. The third time, finally the charm for the Shamrocks as they recover the fumble. And Barry and Springs would take advantage of all the miscues as Chris Patone punches in another touchdown. The Shamrocks roll over all of it, 40 to 21. Sticking in Michigan, Battle Creek and Niles hit the gridiron tonight. Late in the fourth, Niles up 21-18 as running back Javon Ball gets the rock and with some fancy footwork is able to evade tacklers for the first down. But the Bearcats get the ball back and Tyshawn Williams hits the edge. He has space, but he slips. Really slippery conditions out there with 17 seconds left in the game. Jermaine Morris throws up the Hail Mary pass and Keandre Glass comes down with it to give Battle Creek Central the lead. Wow, what a way to win it. Battle Creek Central's prayers are answered. They win it 24-21 over Niles. Elsewhere in Michigan, Edwardsburg wins 38-22 over Vicksburg. And Cassopolis dominates yet again. They defeat Menden 44-6, while Centerville wins over Hartford 58-8, setting up an undefeated showdown between those two in the regular season finale next week. 